Top five in the world at this player shit right now. Bro. Mm. You got to be top five at this. That shit that you be talking in your in your songs, bruh, crazy. Real motherfuckers can relate to that, right? And I want to know. I don't want you to get too much detail up, but out of a hundred percent, how much of the the lyrics is true? You know what I'm saying? And how much is imagination? Yeah, put me on the spot. <laughs> <clears throat> so. <laughs> <laughs> what I'll say is um, my name Duvel translates it's Haitian Creole and it translates to story so my my writing my, my songwriting is typically in story form unless I'm doing like a little jam or like you know some cookout type music or something like that but for the most part everything's in storytelling mode and everything is I'll say this, everything is legit, everything, I wouldn't say that everything happened to me, um, a lot of the times I've had a few friends call me up after they heard my song, and I was like, yo, did you put what I told you in that song, bro, and I'm like, hey man, I, it was a good story, so you know, <laughs> my boys hit me up like, yo, shorty did this, shorty did that, or a lot of my homegirls, you know, talk to me and vent to me about stuff they dealt with. And so that act, that female perspective actually helps me write songs, sure. you know, to the, to to a different type of level. So yeah, everything is things I experienced or you know observed and uh, learned from. Okay, I hear that. I'm glad you went first, Rob, because. I want to get to love and marriage. Are you married, my brother? Nah, nah, I'm not married. Okay. I do be wearing a lot of, nah. Uh, hey, I be wearing a lot of rings. No. <laughs> these, these, are, these are just accessories. Nah, I'm single. Okay, okay. So I'm going to get more. Nothing. I want to get more into the song. Because okay. I feel as though nowadays with uh, the way we lead in and uh, relationship-wise, love and marriage is a far thing, a far fetch, right? Yeah. So break down your uh, the song because most people need that nowadays. Okay, so I'm try. I'm gonna try not to put too much. So, love and marriage is it's a it's a person. That, that song is definitely some personal stuff that happened to me, as well as uh, somebody I was close to. And um, essentially, <clears throat> we kind of like live in this in this world now, where like, you know, everybody ain't shit, and like, you don't have the same like traditions and. And values and and I think right now times have changed so I feel like a lot of people when they got married it was more so out of necessity and out of survival and stuff like that mm -hmm. not saying that there wasn't love but there was just more of a purpose for it partnership type. yeah partnership type thing you know I feel like now everybody can go out and work and get their own money and then there's also the social media thing where it kind of like you have too many options, you know, and it, it gives you an illusion that you can just go have anybody, go get anybody. And so I'm kind of like being transparent and being honest is where I'm like, you know, I definitely have lived, you know, a player lifestyle and I'm single right now, kind of like free to do what I want. But at the same time, I do have times where I'm like, you know, you can't, you're not going to be young forever. You know what I'm saying? And um, growing old alone Even is a real you thing. You want to get cuffed up. <laughs> I'm not saying it right now. But it's like, the way I look at it, it's like, the, the song, like, I know the sound, like, the song sounds like, oh, I'm just talking about not being shit and saying fuck marriage. But it's really, 
we don't have a whole lot of time, but it's really, when I write things, there's really like a, a deeper meaning to it, you know what I'm saying? Um, because, you know, you got your cousins, you know, you grew up going to your cousin's house, stay at your grandma's house, mm -hmm. and y'all all have that bond, and you know, y'all, you know, you might have stepped up with such and such this weekend, such and such that weekend, you know, you all went to graduation, so all that stuff, all those experiences that you grew up having were because people start, decided to get married and decide to have a family, you know what I'm saying? And so now we have all these people like, I don't want no kids, I don't want this, I don't want that. Yo, yo, your boy Coach D here, man, with another one. Listen, Marie Cam May is doing something special for the fellas, man. It's doing something special for the fellas. If your confidence not all the way there and you just need a little bit, a little push, a little extra sign to get you over, Big Dick Energy, Body Butter. Yes, sir. Come and get a Marie Cam May. So, I feel like the stuff I had access to when I was young, as far as just, you know, auntie this, or uncle this, or yeah. grandma so-and-so, or somebody's grandma. Yeah. I feel like it's a different type of environment now. I don't see those people. Uh, I don't see that these kids have the same access or have the same uh, understanding of family values. And I feel that 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just to break down and have all that go. And I want you to break down the, the song that you want to play for us today, too. Did you, is that the same one or what you got for us? Oh, today, that? so today, um, I had sent you Lawrence. So. Yeah. Come in, girl, let me out at you. Nah, come in, girl, let me out at you. Yeah, come in, girl. Nah, nah, for real, let me holler at you. I know I was at the party while and tripping, cussing. I was mad drunk, like, give me, just hit me out for a second, please. Just hit me out, damn, hit me out. Look, I know it's too late to say sorry. I was off the handy and tequila at the party. Yeah, I had too many shots, I didn't mean to start it. Didn't mean to cuss your moms, I always seem to do you wrong. But seeing you with a dude is the hardest. I've been in my feelings lately, I'm just being honest. I've been drinking only, baby, I need an accomplice Let's get back together, baby, let's go and accomplish All the things we said we do, places that we plan to go Cruising on the islands, going shopping out in Tokyo I'm in Miami when I caught you going through my phone See me having conversations with them other hoes, but they just friends I only text them on occasion You can't trust me, you say I'm too affiliated Go ahead and say it, we should've never dated Every time I get your heart, I always seem to break it down, girl You know you never find a nigga like me You know you never find a nigga like me You know you never find a nigga like me You know you never find a nigga like me No, you never find a nigga like me You know you never find a nigga like me You know you never find a nigga like me No, you never find a nigga like me He's a slut, he's a hoe, he's a freak Got a different girl every day of the week And every other day it's your girls on my dick Don't ever mind their business and they always talking shit But if you only knew, they be in my DMs Using freaky ass emojis, trying to be friends It's you and baby girl still sleeping together I know you like I'm skinny, but my pussy is wetter And these are the type of bitches you be listening to So I'ma keep it cooler that you do what you do Do what you do That's a single that's um, coming out. Exclusive. And um, that kind of like ties into the whole 
relationship thing, you know, the up and downs, the back and forth, the toxicity, you know, entertaining things you shouldn't be doing. So I don't know if you guys seen Insecure. So it's titled Lawrence after Lawrence and Insecure to give you an idea of what the Bible song's about. And it's basically like a conversation of me calling my ex, you know, leaving a, an answer, uh, answer machine and just basically going through things that we went through and me apologizing. But then I kind of like flip it towards the, I guess you could call it the hook, it's like my hook, where you kind of like go back to being toxic. Because I feel like, you know, I, if I'm being honest, and I think we're all being honest, you know, we all had our times where it's like we was doing what we wanted to do. But as soon as we seen Shorty with a nigga, we start tripping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I like to be fair yeah, when I write it and try I to can't be. Even laugh. Yeah, you know? It's like, um, I say seeing you with a dude is the hardest, you know, in, in the jump. And it's like, I definitely been, it's a real situation where I was kind of like, yeah, I don't want a relationship right now. You know, I want to be single. I want to see what's out there. I'm in college, you know, and shit like that. And then. Back in front of college. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, sir. But then, you know, you go on Facebook, you see a little photo <laughs> of her and the homeboy. You're like, wait a second, wait a second. I didn't mean what I said, you know, you kind of go back and forth because it's kind of hard. I feel like as a man, you do want to, you know, be good to your, your girl and stuff like that, but you have that that urge to kind of entertain other women. And I feel like a lot of guys aren't really honest about that. I think, I think everybody acting like, oh, you, okay, bitches, you don't do this. You always going to find women attractive. Like, you yeah. got to have that conversation with your woman, like, yo. But you gotta also let her know, like, yo, it, it don't go past that. You know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Past admiration. Because that's, that's real nigga shit to me. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying? Sure. Real talk. Alright, man. So, I'm kind of bummed out. You know, because I was hoping you was going to do Red Lobster, you know, have oh, Red Lobster. young ladies come through this joint, <laughs> you know, throw that joint back, you know. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, nah, next time. You next know, time. next time, next time. So, <laughs> Red Lobster, man, the video. Yeah. Creativity to fucking A plus, man. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? That. For real. That shit yeah, I put funny. a lot of work into that. Yeah, video, man. so, what, what inspired you to do something like that, man? Because only the big one. That, I'm not. Let me let me yeah, dance it up a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Hey, go watch Red Lobster. That joint need to be over a million views right now. Y'all bullshit. That's how I feel. You know what I'm saying? For real, that joint is a masterpiece. For real, man. So, where did creativity inspiration come from? <clears throat> so, where I start? So I met, I wrote the song during COVID. I think like 2020. I was just there was nothing to do, and that's when I was locked in. A lot of these songs you're gonna hear is when I when I was on COVID, just locked in the studio. So I came up with the song and I was like, all right, this is a different vibe. I got a nice energetic uh, thing going on here. And so I sent it out to my team, uh, my creative director, Lay, and then my my videographer, Carl, and I just sent them a song. And then like, everybody was like, oh, yeah, you got one. We gotta do this, we gotta do that. And so we kind of was just like, I know it's you listen to the song. It's colorful, it's mm -hmm. energetic, and um, we've worked. We have a kind of like a relationship with the dance community, and some of them have directed like my videos and stuff like that. So shout out to the dance community. Yeah, yeah, dance community and DMV is dope, and um, we kind of just you know it, it came together over some time. It's kind of like man, I'm telling you, I worked. I was working like twenty four hours a day for like four days a week put the saving bread to pay for that video and um i didn't realize it at first but if you look at the crush on you video mm -hmm. yeah it has those like same colors so i don't think we realized that at first but we kind of just wanted we just want to implement dances we want to implement colors yeah, we want, creative. yeah and, and everybody and don't get me wrong like everybody loves the twerking and stuff like that but I also wanted to add some creativity to yeah. it in the class. So the, like the, the, the choreography, the I mean, the yeah, tools. exactly. Yeah. And the themes and the different, you know, I feel like my music, I feel like I'm an actor and each like song I make is a movie. 
So like I wanted to embody different personalities. So that's why you see one picture I got my, my fro out, mm -hmm. the other one I got braids, the other one I got a wig on, <laughs> just like James Brown yeah. and shit like that. So we kind of like put it piece by piece. But the worst thing, I'm not gonna say the worst thing, the most challenging thing was the set. I had to find a place big enough that wasn't charging the arm and the leg to rent. And I went to, I had to rent a U-Haul truck, I went to Home Depot, bought these big old, like, they're not, uh, it wasn't drywall, it was like foam, it was basically the same size drywall, but foam, painted it, then got you like, working. yeah, I had to <laughs> paint, I had, my cousin had bought this house and she had this big sunroom, she had like a two year old at the time, he's probably older now, um, he walked all over the, the, the painted uh, wall, the set, he walked all over the set, had to repaint it. <laughs> uh, I had put it on a truck. Some of the jumps flew off the truck while I was driving. That, that would have been good part of the Yeah, I probably got it. Yeah, yeah, I probably got it. You know what I'm saying? Had to, had to, I had to stop working with two stylists. One was uh, uh, named Brittany and my other stylist, Teray. They came together, uh, got the outfits for the dancers, and then um, Lizzie. It's all about that team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That team. So like, but I do. But, I definitely yeah. do want to ask you just to close out the show. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Cause that seemed like a TV set. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so I got to ask you about Veli TV. What's okay. going on? What's, what's the? Oh, clothes, dope, you know dope. What okay, saying? so you subscribe. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in there. I want to know. <laughs> I want to know what to expect. What should the people expect from Veli TV? So Veli TV is, um, you know, they got they they set up the uh, broadcast channel on IG, and. For that, I kind of want to like, I feel like, you know, we all post stories and um, reels and stuff like that. And it just kind of, it kind of sits there. Sometimes you get the responses you want. But what I like specifically about uh, the, the broadcast channel on IG, it's like the people kind of like already know who you are, already know what you're doing. So it gave me insight to who actually wants to see more because they could you know you don't really you could just go to my page and see certain stuff so through that i'm going to drop some exclusive footage for lawrence like from the set like behind the scenes we had like that exclusive yeah yeah mm -hmm. we had a we had a conversation about like toxic relationships and like one of the actors was like kind of like went in on her own personal shit and it was funny so the line the the song actually aligned with like what she was going through so I'm gonna put some of that stuff in there, and then we got the side chick 3.0 video coming up. You know, it's G rated. It looks like I know it looks like it's gonna be X rated, but it's it's, uh, it's PG 13 probably. But um, I'm gonna drop some you know exclusive clips in there, and through that I just kind of see what want to see what you guys got going on. I have a lot of stuff going on, like you know I got uh, my cousin has these parties that he goes to, so I'm trying to curate some content to follow through there just to kind of experiment and see what's going on so appreciate y'all for subscribing to that check out belly tv yes, yeah. love peace appreciate y'all my fault man i feel like rambling bro <laughs> no that's what we do yeah i'm like that too much yeah.